my name is Sam Bedwell. I am with CTI, of course, and uh, very happy to be here with you today. This is a basic overview of our regular basic stain removal class. Now, for those of you who know me, uh, I teach this class all over the country, and I'm uh, super excited to be with you today to do this. And then, of course, this gives you an incentive to come to my full classes so that you get the hands-on experience. But I wanted to go through this with you a little bit and uh, give you an idea of what our basic stain removal class looks like so that uh, you can learn some basics and get out there and start making money today. Those of you who know me know that my goal is to help you make right now money. So my goal today is to show you some tips, some techniques through this webinar that you can then go out and apply immediately and start making money on your jobs or at least start making a, a better uh, effort at your jobs if you're having some difficulties removing certain spots and stains I'm hoping this will help uh, alleviate that for you so let's go through these a little bit with uh, with the presentation as you can see our very first slide is giving you an idea of what products we're going to talk about today but let's uh, to do it. Are you updated? That's our very first thing. We want to make sure that you are connected to us every way you can be. And of course, that is our tech support number, the 800 number. Please feel free to call our office anytime and speak to our tech support. Todd is our number one guy there. He handles all our tech support. But uh, failing that, you may get Chad or you may even get Clint if you're lucky enough. So uh, please uh, feel free to call the office. All of the staff is very interested in speaking with you and very knowledgeable about products and getting them to you. So if you need some help, please call the office. Also, our new updated website, I am super excited about that. It is uh, way better than it was before, if I can say it that way. And uh, it appears on three platforms, so you can see it on your PC or Mac on your a tablet or iPad as I do or on your smartphone so all of those are available to you for uh, your viewing pleasure if you need some help if you need to find out where your nearest distributor is if you need some help with some products or uh, just an additional help with stain removal the website can help you do that so take a look at that it's proschoice.com these are some other ways to stay connected with us. Pro's Choice and the number one is our YouTube channel. The videos that you're going to see today, a lot of them are, are, are in the presentation, but we have so many more on our YouTube channel that you can view over and over again if you need to, just to give you some ideas about how to do things. It's often helpful to watch us do something rather than just having explained to you. So take a look at the videos. There's a lot of them there for your uh, information and to help you. Also on our Facebook page, many, many updates show up on our Facebook page. We give uh, product information there. We give uh, class and webinar information there. So uh, you'll see me, you'll see Craig, and a few others uh, hanging out in the Facebook page. So uh, do like us there, and then you'll get those updates on a regular basis. Okay, and of course we still have our phone app, our Stain app, if you want to use that, but I encourage you to take a look at the website. I think you'll find it's more updated and um, more, a little bit more right now technology, but we still do have our Stain app if you uh, prefer to use that. First on our happy list, we are going to have to uh, look at the responsibility, accountability of us. So basically, we are held here to help you, but the stain does belong to you. So let's uh, talk a little bit about how we can help uh, mitigate the damage. Make sure that you guys aren't uh, putting, as Todd says, a smoking hole in the carpet. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to help you with that today. Let's talk about the beginning, the basics. We are going to work off the premise that you've never removed a stain before. Now I know that's not true, but kind of wipe your mind of the things that... Uh, that you have been thinking about before or techniques that you have learned previously and see if what we teach you today doesn't help you do it better or change your mind on some things. We don't want any preconceived notions here today, no ideas about how uh, it basically works so that um, you're able to absorb all the information that I'm going to provide for you. To me, these are the most profitable and effective effective methods out there for stain removal. So take a look and hopefully you'll agree with me. Those of you who know me know that I came from uh, 
a, a fully commercial market, uh, very little on the residential side until I started working in water and fire damage. But um, to me, I believe that you should what you do. We are all entrepreneurs, and uh, you are some of the hardest working entrepreneurs out there. So uh, uh, having a stain removal market, some place to market your skills is important to me. So I kind of throw some things out there for you. First of all, house cleaning services. Um, basically, this became a phenomenon in the last 20 years or so, a real business entity. Uh, prior to that, it was pretty unheard of for people to have a regular uh, cleaning service come in and, uh, and clean their houses. Uh, those of you who know my family history, my own grandmother was in service, as we call it. Uh, if you are at, at all Downton Abbey fans, you'll know that in service means that she worked for one of the great families of Chicago as a as a ladies maid and a, as a regular maid. So she was in service and uh, that was pretty much the way that house cleaning services were provided prior to I mean, even the last 20 years. So house cleaning services have become quite a regular business. For you, the carpet cleaner, this is an opportunity for you to trade referrals. They are great at their job, but they are not necessarily trained to do any kind of spot and stain removal on carpet or upholstery, and this is an opportunity for you. Also, it's an opportunity for them to call somebody and, and basically take care of a problem in their client and then have an opportunity for you to refer business to them in with your client. So a great cross referral system can happen with house cleaning services. With carpet cleaning stores or carpet stores, I worked in a carpet uh, dealership uh, when I cut my teeth in a design and uh, we had a carpet service, a cleaning company that was on referral to us. We referred them out probably two or three times a week to customers that we had installed carpet in. So if you think about it this way, we installed uh, someone's home and maybe two, three months later, they would call us up and they would say, so the, the carpet's you know, getting a little dirty. What do I do? How do I clean it? We didn't have products in the store to offer them. We had a carpet cleaner on referral that we simply gave out his number and and uh, he went in and gave him a quote and did the job. So this is a chance for you as well to make a friend with carpet cleaning stores or carpet stores, chance for you to um, to offer your services on a regular basis. Auto dealerships are another great place to do that. If you've uh, bought a car recently or ever, you know that uh, that their carpet is pretty pretty dirty, it's pretty soiled, and those uh, decisions are made at their level. So while I worked at extreme high-end commercial uh, corporate work, and I handled a lot of dealerships, a lot of auto companies, I did not handle the dealerships at those levels. Those decisions were made at the level of the uh, management or the owner. So go make a friend and offer your services. Do a test clean. Let them know what your uh, abilities are and see if you can't get uh, pick up some extra work there. Also, property managers and real estate agents, of course, they're always trying to turn out business. Property managers regularly turn out apartments and, uh, and rentals. Those of you who know me, a few of my uh, carpet cleaners uh, do this sort of work regularly. This is their bread and butter. So they are working for uh, apartment managers in several hundred apartment blocks, basically. So the idea being that they would um, maybe do two or three a day. Now, individually, the apartments don't pay a lot, but if you have two or three a day and you work five days a week, it can be quite a little bit of an income for you. So property managers and real estate agents, another great place to uh, market your skills. Okay, start with the basics. Discolorations that can be cannot be removed with normal cleaning procedures and come from many different sources. Now in my classes, I always ask the question of the students, what is a normal cleaning procedure? So I want you to think about that a minute. What is a normal cleaning procedure? This is the point usually where somebody uh, says, well, you know, we, we lay down a pre-spray and we extract it out. Yes, in the most common sense, that is, that is a normal cleaning procedure. But the more broad sense would be, that you're laying down some sort of surfactant, you're suspending that soil, and then you are preparing it for removal somehow. Either hot water extraction, low moisture, pad cleaning, RX20, whatever that might be. But the idea is the, the soil suspension and then the removal. 
the reason that the stain is left behind is because it's some other thing, it's some other entity. It doesn't get removed with that basic cleaning procedure. So that's what we're going to discuss today. CTI thinks in two forms. We think in the form of a, a contamination and then in this stage, a discoloration. So that's what we're after here today. Okay, stains can be two different things. They can be um, externally uh, adhered, so that can be your tar and your and your grease and your gum and things that basically stick to the outside of the fiber, or it can be those substances that penetrate and actually uh, dye the dye sites. If you guys are familiar with how carpet is constructed, or if you've not been on a mill tour yet, this is the sort of thing that you need to put on your list of things to do this year. Go to a mill tour and see how this is done. Carpet is made synthetically. It's made from some sort of plastic substance. So, for instance, if you take nylon, it's made from, you know, plastic bottles and other plastic sources. And it's delivered in a, in a um, bead form to the mill. The mill puts it into a machine called a spinneret, and it extrudes those fibers out, and they come out like fishing line. So when that happens, they put in what they call dye sites. They put in little uh, holes in those fibers to accept color, to accept dye. So as a um, substance that penetrates those can actually penetrate those dye sites and dye over the, uh, the color that's been applied to the actual fiber by the mill. That's what we're after here today. So we're going to be dealing with both sides of those stains. Okay, this is the part that you need to learn. So if you need to write it down, if you need to take a picture of the slide, whatever you might want to do, you need to internalize this section. This is what's going to make you money. This is what's going to save you when you're out on the job. I'm going to teach you how to think before you treat. We pre-treat our spots in in CTI's world so that's the first thing you're going to learn is pre-treating your spots but I want you to think about it in the terms of a categorization you're going to start thinking about your jobs before you actually start any procedure and try and analyze where the spot came from what the origin was so that you use the proper procedure to remove it so let's talk about what that might be okay CTI thinks in categories so synthetic food dyes is our first category, organic, petroleum, and protein. So take a minute and think about what those might be. What would a synthetic food dye be? Most often, carpet cleaners, it's Kool-Aid. That is definitely one, and there are several, several categories out there that would uh, fall into the synthetic food dye family. So broaden your horizons a little bit. Kool-Aid also comes in 400 colors and flavors. So it doesn't necessarily have to be red. That's the other um, old-fashioned thinking that I want you to get away from. We're not going to think in terms of color anymore. We're going to think in terms of origin at this point. So if it's synthetic food dye, that basically means that it has been treated in a lab. It's been created and enhanced in a lab. Sometimes it's a natural food that's been enhanced but a lot of times it's actually been created in a lab. If it comes in a box, a, a jug, a jar, a, a can, those sorts of things, it may have already been treated by um, a synthetic process to enhance its color and flavor. That enhancement, that basically 10% on top of the, uh, of the actual food is what we're dealing with today. That is what will not be removed with a normal cleaning procedure. With organic, our second category, that's basically anything that comes from a tree, a berry, a bush, a body. So think about organic in the true sense. Fruit, for example, if it has actually come from the ground, if, you, if it's actually come from the vegetable section of the grocery store, that is where you're going to be looking for your organic products and not um, in, your, uh, in your frozen food sections or in your boxed food sections. Those are going to be pre-treated with synthetic uh, enhancement. With your organics, you're truly looking for those products that have not yet been uh, uh, synthetically enhanced, if you will, with, uh, with a lab. Petroleum stains are going to be right up your alley as far as being anything that comes from the tar, that comes from the street, but also be thinking about them in terms of other things like cosmetics, lipstick, mascara. Those are also petroleum-based, sad to say, 
So uh, those are going to be cleaned a little bit differently than maybe you had previously thought. And of course, last are protein stains, our true protein stains. Those are going to be your more heavily contaminated stains, um, anything that's forcibly ejected from the body, whether willingly or not, uh, would categorize into the protein family. That would be your, um, your vomit, feces, that sort of thing. So let's get started. Oh, and our mystery stain. We will discuss a mystery stain at some point today. So um, that'd be interesting. Think about that for a second. This is what our uh, stain kit looks like, our spotting kit. Kind of a nifty thing. Um, back in the day when uh, manufacturers made spotting kits, they made them to be hard-sided. They made them to have specialty products in them, specialty sizes even. So it made it harder for a distributor to even order those sizes. And it made it hard for you as the uh, carpet cleaner to refill them when you use them. Everybody knows that when you buy a kit, there's going to be a couple of things that you're going to use uh, so much faster than you would if you were, you know, if, if it was another product. So some are going to go faster than others. It became very difficult to replace those items. So when we built ours, we built them with running line products in regular sizes. That way, when you run out of something, you're able to just go ahead and go back to your local distributor and repurchase to replace that product. So great idea there. Also comes with a stain guide. So the stain guide is able to help you uh, even above and beyond our regular website and our stain app. That's uh, something that you can uh, that you can use. And it's a, a full-sided book, so it's going to give you a lot of tips and tricks on cleaning procedures and spotting procedures. Okay, first family, our synthetic food dye category. Kool-Aid, mouthwash, candy, cough syrup, and sauce mixes. Some examples there for you of what might be a synthetic food dye. Some of those are not things that you normally would think about, like um, cough syrup, like uh, a cold medicine, uh, a candy, or, or jello products. Those are totally synthetically enhanced products. They are not at all any sort of um, food-based item. So they're not be something that's going to have any organic properties in them. What's going to clean away regularly, you know, easily is going to be the foundation of the product. What is going to be left behind is the color, the synthetic color that was added to it to make it look uh, appealing. Um, if it, in fact, uh, is supposed to be cherry, for instance, then the cherry is a very deep synthetic color and a very deep flavor to cover up the medicine flavor, for example, or the sugar flavor of the drink mix. So that's what we're dealing with here. Our group for this is our Red Relief family, Red One or Red Relief. Red Relief also for a natural fibers, which has a CSS component. So Red Relief is our original product, two part. Remember keeping in mind that while it has an extended shelf life, uh, of a, a product that uh, has not been opened or left with uh, in, in the exposure of a weather, then it has a longer shelf life. Once two-part products are mixed, we have an average usage of six to eight hours. So keep in mind that when you're mixing these products that you want to mix them and use them. They are not designed to be kept overnight to, uh, to use the next morning. As soon as you start adding days to that mixture, you start getting to a point where you're losing the, the potency of the, of the product. So mix it and then use it. With Red One, Red One is my favorite of this line simply because of its ease of use. It is a one part product, but it also is able to be used on both synthetic fibers and natural fibers. So you can literally go from a nylon carpet straight into an area rug, straight onto upholstery, and use Red One in all of those instances without worrying about whether you're working on a blend or a natural fiber or a totally synthetic fiber. It also, of course, uh, again, limits the amount of time mixing. There's no mixing here, so it extends the shelf life of the product. You're back to that extended year or so of the life of a product. Uh, it is truly, in my mind, it is the upgraded technology from uh, Red Relief. But if you're committed to Red Relief, at please do not change and feel uh, you know feel the need to change simply because we have a new product out there. If you're committed to Red One 
then please continue to use it. But either one are not going anywhere. So you're able to pick and choose. Also, if you aren't able to get one, you can certainly substitute with the other. Easy choices for you. On our video that we're about to see, you're able to see uh, how we're going to apply our red relief on a regular Kool-Aid stain using steam acceleration. I prefer a wallpaper steamer or a drapery steamer for this rather than an iron. Just my opinion, but it limits the risk of burning the carpet when you have an iron. If you use an iron, you're certainly um, uh, able to burn the carpet more easily. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. If you're a traditionalist and you've been taught how to use an iron properly, great. If you're uncomfortable with that, then a wallpaper steamer or drapery steamer would be a great choice for that application. Pro's Choice Red Relief is the best answer for synthetic food dye stains. When using Red Relief, simply mix Part A with Part B in equal amounts. To apply the Red Relief, simply spray enough of the mixed solution to thoroughly wet the stained fibers. Many light to moderate stains will disappear with just a few minutes of dwell time. Red Relief was developed nearly 20 years ago, and when it was released, this industry-changing product revolutionized stain removal for carpet cleaners across the country. The leading stain removers for stains like Kool-Aid, Gatorade, cough syrup, and other synthetic food dyes would bleach the carpet as readily as remove the stain. The chemistry behind Red Relief changed all that by using a reduction method to chemically alter the structure of the stain molecules, literally making them invisible. Once the stain is gone, be sure to rinse the area thoroughly to complete the stain removal process. For more stubborn stains, you can accelerate the conversion by applying steam heat. This can be done by using a wallpaper steamer or even a simple steam iron. We'll be using an iron for this demonstration. First, wet a clean white terry towel with water and squeeze out the excess water. To apply the red relief, simply spray enough of the mixed solution to thoroughly wet the stained fibers. Next, fold the towel in half and lay the towel over the stain. Then with an iron that's been set to the lowest steam setting, set the iron on the towel over the stain. No need to press down on the iron, just set it gently on the spot. Allow the iron to dwell over the stain for 15 seconds, then lift the iron in the towel and inspect the stain. Typically it will have disappeared or changed to a yellow that will extract out. If the stain is not completely changed or been removed, just repeat the process to remove the remainder of the stain. And remember, a yellow discoloration that won't extract out is an indication of an incomplete stain conversion. Don't hesitate to reapply the red relief and try again. For organic stains like red wine, be sure to use Pro's Choice Stain Magic, companion product to Red Relief for organic stains. Keep in mind that our videos for both Red Relief and Red One are on our YouTube channel. I encourage you to take a look at our Red One video. It gives you some ideas of the differences between the two products and, and the more versatility of Red One. So take a look at both products. I think that you'll find that um, each one has a place in your, in your arsenal of products. Let's talk about our second category, Category 2, ex Organic Stains. This is going to be your true... Uh, protein, your true organics, body, tree, berry, bush uh, products. Mustard, coffee, wine, tea, fruit, fruit meaning the traditional fruit and not the powdered or jarred or canned versions. And uh, furniture stains. Furniture stains are often something that carpet cleaners mistake for being more like petroleum based product, more like paint. And when I get to uh, the furniture stains, I'll explain that. But uh, in truth, the actual stain is in our organic family. So let's talk about how we can uh, do that. First thing, of course, our family for that is going to be our stain magic 
or our stain one or even our urine stain remover if it's a urine stain you can use that as well uh, stain one is our one part product of stain magic but it is slightly different in both its uh, technology and how it's built it has uh, some other properties in it uh, dirt chaser and ara that help with anti-wicking anti-resoiling uh, uh, situations but it is a one part product if you're not interested in mixing products then maybe uh, stain one might be a better choice for you keep in mind that while red one can be used on both natural and synthetic fibers stain magic and stain one both still need our css component in order to lock the dyes in and keep them from um, from shifting on you the last thing that you want to have happen is to use these products on a, on a natural fiber or a natural blend and have uh, your dyes run off the uh, the side of your uh, of your surface you're working on so um, something else you'll have to fix later if that happens and just keep that in mind you'll still want the CSS component so in our first example we are working on a coffee scene this was the bane of my existence with uh, commercial work I never understood how it was that coffee cup and planner and no lid ended up coffee on floor <laughs> it's just always the way it was with our uh, with our commercial clients they never seem to be able to keep their coffee in their cup so I had a, a just it was just everywhere it was every service with um, additional spot cleaning for uh, for coffee and soda so uh, the first thing that we're going to do is talk about stain magic with our coffee if I had had stain magic and been using that when I was doing uh, large commercial work my coffee cleaning experiences would have been a vastly different than they were it took us uh, sometimes a couple of days a couple of tries to clean coffee in other words we we treat it and then we'd have to come back the next night and retreat it again and sometimes a third night if we'd had stain magic we would have been able to treat the coffee stain we would have been able to reapply stain magic before we left and allowed it to work overnight and then more than likely we wouldn't have need to come back second day we would have just had to come back maybe just to vacuum it or let the janitorial service know that all they needed to do was vacuum the area that's how efficient and how amazing the uh, the technology with stain magic is it is the most aggressive of our spotters so it's a just one of those one-of-a-kind uh, products that that uh, CTI came out with first thing we do of course it's a 50 50 mix meaning that one ounce to one ounce two ounce to two ounce three ounce to three ounce and so on so you want to make sure that your mixture is absolutely correct this should be your mantra for everything that you do with carpet cleaning you need to make sure that when you're mixing your products you're mixing them correctly it's very important that you mix them according to the instructions we as a manufacturer give you the proper instructions based upon certain scenarios it gives you some latitude in deciding how the condition is with our spotters it is literally a one-to-one -one mix so equal parts one ounce to one ounce two ounce to two ounce and so on next up we are going to use our stain magic liberally don't be afraid of it it is self neutralizing it will not uh, damage the fibers if you use too much you want to go ahead and make sure that you have a full coverage on the spot and allow it to do its work okay after one hour keep in mind we didn't do anything with the spot we allowed it to simply exist and so uh, we wanted to see what would happen with the stain magic working independently so that's what happened here it uh, literally at one hour it was nearly gone and you see the next one after two it's it's nearly invisible there's almost nothing left and then after three and then again after four there's just nothing there it will take some time depending on the amount um, when I was working commercial work sometimes it would be pots of coffee so it may take more than just one or two tries with stain magic if it's a lot your average coffee spot will take far less than four hours so uh, be confident with stain magic hey okay, next up uh, of course in the classes we do this as part of our class demo uh, taking out wine stains previously wine seemed to be one of those weird misnomers that uh, we never could remove it it just seemed to hang around we we weren't very good at it 
Stain Magic wipes these out in, in seconds. So you literally can see the transformation. As soon as you put the product on the stain, you can see how it's working against the wine and taking the color straight out, the dye straight out. So I think you'll be impressed with how that works. Certainly in my classes, it's seconds. But uh, we do give it a whole uh, 10 minutes here in our, uh, in our demonstration here in our webinar. And six minutes later, it's uh, gone. And then in 10 minutes later, there's nothing at all. I guarantee you it takes far less than that. So I think you'll be impressed with how fast Stain Magic works. Okay, our furniture stains. Remember I talked to you about this a little bit earlier about how this was going to work. Basically, the vehicle that we apply uh, furniture stain with is, in fact, petroleum-based and needs a solvent to remove it. So that's where we would use our ProSolve gel. Simply break it up and then extract that out. But what's left over is the stain, the organic stain that's left behind. And that is where carpet cleaners a lot of times make the misjudgment on what a furniture stain actually is. We need to apply stain magic at this point to uh, to take care of those uh, stained fibers but we also need time and this is where carpet cleaners kind of um, miss the mark maybe and maybe this has been an issue for you why you haven't been able to successfully remove furniture stains in the past is because of time we need to cover the stain with stain with a clear plastic sheeting in order for it to uh, allow the stain magic to need several hours of dwell time here so then maybe that's one of the challenges that you've come up with is you've not been giving it enough time. So let's walk you through the slides and you can see what's going on. We're using our basic uh, cling film here, you know, dollar store special. This is done, does not have to be expensive. It's simply designed to keep the stain magic at a level where it continues to work. That's what we're after here. We don't want it to evaporate too soon and not be able to attack this, this stain. And then you leave it on for several hours or overnight. Tell your homeowner that uh, they can simply leave it on overnight and then the next day they can take the uh, clean film away and vacuum the area and, uh, and be good to go. Not important for you to come back. You don't need to come back to uh, make sure that the stain is uh, cleaned or do any additional steps there. The stain magic has taken care of everything for you. and then it's gone. Okay, Rust is even easier. We make a product called Rust Away. A simple one part product, one part application. You apply it, you agitate and extract out. Please keep in mind that extraction is always very important with spot cleaning. You want to get the most thorough result. So you want to flush everything out, not only the solution that you're applying, but also the contamination that's originally there. In my classes, I blot because I was taught to spot clean that way, and it's easier than hauling around equipment. But for you, the professional, you already have your equipment out. So take that extra step and just extract as you spot clean. You'll find that you have a much more thorough result if you do that. With RustAway, is simply apply, agitate, and extract, and then you're good to go. Rust is gone, and you're moving on to your next job.
Okay, next up are organic stains in this group. A little bit tougher. Um, the one time that we need to have uh, a little bit extra help is with mustard or curry or turmeric. They are um, either spices or, or um, additional condiments that uh, are made from a natural source. So they're not only organic, but they're organic in kind of a strange way. Prior to the industrial age, we dyed fabric with natural products. So we dyed them with weed, we dyed them with berries, we dyed them with tea leaves, we dyed them with shellfish. Mustard was one of those natural dyes that they use, natural products that they use to, to dye fabric. So it's very, very strong. And it, it, it attacks the dye sites and attaches itself in a distinctive way. It's not easily removed with the other uh, products that we, you know, and, and, and processes that we've discussed so far. It needs a little bit extra help. So we created something called a DCI light. This is a light that uh, has an, a little bit extra bonus for you. It has a three bulb, which you're going to see in the video. One of them is a chemical activation light, which is what we're going to use here. It is going to allow the not only the stain magic to the dye sites and on the stained uh, on the stained dye sites, but it's going to render them invisible, which is what that has to happen here. You're going to clean away the mustard first, as you're going to see in the video, and then you're going to treat the residual stain. So let's take a look at that.
concern. I know we've talked a little bit about this so far when we talked about our vehicle for um, for furniture stains, but take a look at some of the products here that we're talking about for uh, for petroleum stains. Some things that maybe you hadn't thought about before. Gum is a big ticket item here. Gum is in fact a petroleum based product. Yes, it might taste good, but believe it or not. It is made from the distillation byproduct of gasoline. It's made from mineral oil. So mineral oil is not good for you, not good for your skin. And as a carpet cleaner, it uh, makes it more difficult to remove. So it becomes these products become more like paint to remove than maybe like Kool-Aid or, um, or like uh, coffee maybe that you were thinking before. Grease, of course, uh, not food-based, but we're talking about the actual asphalt type. And then, of course, uh, nail polish, shoe polish, and our sleeper product, makeup or cosmetic skincare products, again, made from mineral oil. So they are going to react differently than maybe you had previously thought. Acne medication also has a bleaching agent in it. So that can cause color loss if it is uh, dropped on the carpet later on when it's extracted out or removed. It can, uh, can cause some uh, color loss damage there. So be aware of that. Another opportunity for you in our classes, in our advanced stain class, we talk about our, our color cosmetics and how to repair uh, bleach spots. So stick, stick around for that one or go to your local distributor and see that class and attend it with me. But uh, for the basic class, we uh, just discuss the petroleum and then take a look at the videos and you can see how the CMCs work if you're interested right now. Let's talk about the first group. Why are these stains so difficult to remove? Basically, as a, uh, as a it's a formulator question. So basically, they contain a large change molecule that uh, is difficult to break. The uh, carbon chain, the longer it is, the thicker the product, or what we call viscous, it's more viscous product. So that's uh, basically your one and done answer as to why uh, petroleum stains might be more difficult to remove than you previously thought they should be. What we're currently doing and why it isn't working. Hands down, this was our procedure for removing ink in a commercial environment. My crew spent days and days and days and days removing ink. The worst possible thing to have happen, and I know it's happened to all of you, is that you're extracting along and things are wonderful, and then all of a sudden, a little bit of a tiny spot ends up to be a big balloon of ink, and you had no idea that how that happened. This is basically what's going on with you. So you apply the solvent, life is great so far, you agitate, extract, wonderful, it spreads, but you reapply and extract some more, okay, great, spread some more, but hey, we're still working on it, and then you repeat, and you repeat, and you repeat, and it causes the carpet to delaminate because it's a solvent, and solvents attack everything that is petroleum-based, including carpet adhesive, so your carpet begins to break down because you're working at it so hard and you still have uh, no removal of ink or a larger deposit of the ink and there you are. So let's look at a different way of doing that. This is of course a video on YouTube, but we also do this in our basic spotting class in our distributors so that you can have a hands-on uh, view of how this works. Now in the video you're going to see, it's going to be a little bit harder to see what I'm going to uh, talk to you about, but when we do it in the class, we see that the, the ink, once we apply the stain magic first to surround it and contain the ink and keep it from spreading, then we apply our solvent. When we do that, it literally brings the ink to the surface and binds to itself so that it makes it easier to remove and keeps it from spreading. So take a look and see if that's what you see when you're looking at this video.
the whole day is the ink removal. They see how, how easy ink comes out because we've contained it with Stain Magic. When you do this for yourself, you're going to see exactly what we're talking about. It is such a quick process and such a dramatic thing. It's going to save you so much labor and so much time and make you so much more money. So give that, uh, that process a try. And uh, let's take a look at shoe polish. Um, for my Midwestern players, this seems to be a bigger issue. Uh, anywhere for us near uh, a naval base, near an army base, uh, in Camp Pendleton, anywhere like that, uh, any sort of barrack housing or, uh, or academies, this seems to be a big ticket item for them. So take a look at our video for uh, shoe polish removal and see if we can't make it vastly easier for you to remove, or remove um, shoe polish as well.
Okay. Next step, of course, in our last set of videos is uh, our category three. We're going to talk a little bit about candle wax. Candle wax has a slightly different approach. It is a petroleum-based product, but we are going to be approaching it slightly differently in the video. So take a look at that. It is not uh, a petroleum uh, removal. It is not, in other words, our ProSolve that we're going to be removing it with. We're actually going to be removing it with our Power Gel. Power Gel is something you saw in the last video with our shoe polish. If you don't carry that around in uh, the gallon jugs, you are missing out. Uh, it has so many uses. It is like detergent in a tube. It just works on a myriad of stains and situations. We also use it in combination with uh, our advanced stains for uh, reversing pH and doing all sorts of things to assist with stain removal. So our power gel is powerful. So go out and get you a gallon of it. Make sure you have plenty of it. But take a look at the video and uh, see what you think. Okay, our category four, our final category. We were more involved with uh, urine um, in this category and in our organic stains than previous, but um, with our category four, with our protein stains, keep in mind that we're dealing with more solid material here, either uh, forcibly or uh, or voluntarily ejected from the body. So uh, feces, vomit, blood, and urine all fit into this category of protein stains. Our family for this, of course, can be stain magic and stain one, certainly, and urine stain remover, which we talked about before. But uh, Prozyme and Dirt Chaser are enzymatic pre-sprays that we make that may be a great choice for you if you're looking to lay down a pre-spray as well as mix them up as a spotter this is a good choice. I like products that work double, triple duty. So Prozyme and Dirt Chaser can be mixed as a spotter and used as a pre-spray in the same application. So that might be a great choice for you in these certain circumstances. So consider those.
And of course, always for pet urine or any type of urine, really, uh, you can use any one of these products. The urine stain remover, stain one, or stain magic can be used uh, in, in the certain circumstances because as Todd says, not everything they do is cute. I think everything they do is cute, but maybe your homeowner doesn't. So this might be an opportunity for you. Okay, keep in mind for natural fibers. When I teach the, both the basic stain removal class and the advanced stain removal class, we talk about natural fibers a lot. Natural fibers are sensitive creatures. They do not respond well to our traditional technology. In other words, our traditional pre-sprays, our traditional spotters, and our traditional rinse agents. So we, we need to think of them in more careful terms. So our CSS component is what we add to both our Stain Magic and our Red Relief to make sure that you protect the fiber and protect the dye and keep those from, uh, from leaving on you. As I said, the last thing in the world that you want is for you to be working on something such as an area rug or, uh, or upholstery and have the dye shift from one end, of the, uh, subs uh, one end of the project to the other. That's no fun at all. So uh, trying to get those reversed is a bigger issue than, than actually taking the time to provide the CSS component and protect your fibers. So think about that for natural fibers. We also make a full natural fiber line for cleaning those products. So if you're cleaning area rugs or if you're cleaning upholstery, we have a rug restore, which is a one part product for a bath method. We also have a full upholstery and natural fiber line for cleaning area rugs and upholstery. So check that out as well. Okay, let's go through the basics of what we talked about. Certainly our solvent family, pro solve liquid or gel, uh, interchangeable. They, uh, they are good for one or the other in certain circumstances. I prefer the liquid for ink removals, more wet removal, simply because it penetrates faster and moves faster. I prefer the gel for things that sit on top of the carpet, such as gum and candle wax, things like that, so that you're able to work the product in and have that opportunity to work with it. Um, either one can be used in, in either circumstance, so either one will work. Our power gel, just a detergent in a tube. Great for everything that you'd want to deal with. Uh, just an awesome, awesome uh, product. Red Relief or Red One for our synthetic fiber removal, so our synthetic dye removal. And then, of course, Stain Magic for our organic family. So keep those in mind. And we also have Stain One as a one part product for our organic family as well. Tech support. Please remember to, uh, to jump onto our new website in any platform. I think you'll be impressed with it. And of course, by phone, uh, our tech support and uh, any one of our phenomenal staff would be happy to help you with any questions that you have at all about any products, labels, questions, usage, whatever you can think of. They will attempt their very best to help you, and they're some of the most knowledgeable people in the industry. So they're, they're at your disposal. Of course, we have the app still, so it is on both the iTunes market and the uh, Android market for your, for your smartphones. So take a look at those. Please take a look at the rest of our videos on YouTube on our Pros Choice and the number one channel and see if there's something else out there. And then check with your local distributor and see when my next class is. I can't wait to meet you in person and demonstrate some of these things for you in person and be able to answer your questions. We have a lot of new classes that are available to you, both um, basic stain, advanced stain, um, basic odor, advanced odor, and so on. So there's plenty of opportunity for you to update your skills in person with your distributor. I thank you so much for your time and look forward to meeting you in person. Go out and make some money and send me videos. I love to see what you've done and I love to see how you use our products. So have a great day and I look forward to seeing you soon.